sports fans, my name is Crobat for the win, owner of the Los Angeles Nitto Kings, here today with week two of the NPL against Cloud, uh, the Jersey Dwebbles. Uh, he's got a very strong team, and I know he won last week. He looked very impressive for his first week here in the league, so I know I have a big uphill battle ahead, something I gotta put together, really good team. One of the things I noticed going in is that Crobat has a very good matchup, so we'll just see how that all plays out. I also got a couple of really heat sets that I really can't wait to show you all. So, one quick note, uh, this video is dedicated to the Doug Flutie Foundation, Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation rather, which is dedicated to autism research. There will be a little ad at the end of the video. You're more than welcome to make any kind of donation. I know certainly I'm going to be contributing, as I will every week. So, let's jump in. Here's the game. You can see his team. Scizor Shaman, uh, Dragalji, Sandslash, Mian Shao, and Rotom Wash. The only thing that really gets in Crobat's way to, that I can see is Rotom Wash. I'm going to leave with Crocodile, and actually I was really hoping he would just go straight up for the Hydro Pump, but unfortunately, after. Oh, Smackdown, that's actually my really cool set. Uh, unfortunately, he just goes to the Low Lisp. Well, I'm not gonna argue. Number seven, Bob Watts. Oh my God! Bob Watts. Somebody opened the trap door in the pirate's booth, and Bob Watts just fell right through it. Big tree fall hard. Although my crocodile will be burned, as we can see, it's actually not that bad. I can still threaten it with an earthquake, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lose too much sleep over it. I kind of just fall out of my chair, like that guy did on Sports Center. Uh, I know he's going to switch because he can't risk me going for the EQ. He's going to go into Shaman, which is just fine. You know, I can easily get Stealth Rocks up, which is going to be pretty important to this game, might I add. So, honestly, Crocodile is doing okay. Also, just to point out, this is Pashoberry Crocodile, so I could have easily taken a Hydro Pump if he went for it first turn. Easily. Anyways, I go into Rotom Cut and see Leech Seeds, which actually is very good information. I don't think he's going to have very many attacks. He's probably a more bulky variant. So I think I can ex expect Seed Flare, maybe one other attack. Maybe. But we'll see. I go for the Light Screen because this is my Light Clay Dual Screens Rotom Cut. I can just Volt Switch out of there and I know I can safe sw safely switch in pretty much anything. I safely switch in Crobat, which actually has a pretty good matchup against this thing, I'll say. Unfortunately, he sets up the Toxic Spikes, which is kind of a minor nuisance for Volcanion. But it's really not that bad. He only has one layer up, so I'm not going to complain too much. I go for the Taunt, because I didn't want him to get another layer up to really hinder Volcanion. Thank God he did not get the burn with that Scald. I go for the Super Fang, get some big damage off, as he goes for the Sludge Wave, I presume predicting my switch. I mean, that would make sense maybe to go into Volcanion to take the Scald. Uh, he down switches out, which is good. Get to go for another Super Fang or Brave Bird, whatever I go for here. I think I go for the, let's say, uh, I go for the Super Fang. Yeah, that makes the most sense. So, that says was actually pretty close to Brave Bird range. I mean, I'm going to go for another Super Fang just to ensure, I'm pretty sure I needed more damage, but this is definitely Brave Bird range. So he's gonna go for the Bullet Punch, which I can take with this bulky Crobat. Roost the damage back, which is awesome. I can just, I, I think I go for it one more time, just to have some health when I take this thing out. And I have plenty for Brave Bird recoil. And I think I will, I'm pretty much full. Light Scream wears off, but against a Scizor, it's not really relevant. Bullet Punch is not going to do too much. I'm left with over half. Could go for the Brave Bird to just finish that thing off. And Scissor is gone. And I'm going to be honest, I, I, don't, I didn't calc the damage. I really don't know. I'm not sure if that was Choice Band or not. I just find it really strange. He kept going for Bullet Punch. Maybe, I, maybe he could have switched. I don't know. But if that was Banded damage, it's either Crobat is just so bulky. Or that was uh, maybe not a fully offensive Scissor. I don't know. But it was still, took it on really well. I know switch to Crocodile, predicting the Volt Switch, which is fine. It, it's totally fine. I still have the Pasho Berry, which I can rely on right here, right now. Go for the Smackdown, because I want to threaten this thing out. Even with a burn, the Earthquake, Stab, it's threatening to that Rotom Wash. I now take the Hydro Pump pretty well, actually. I, I'm not going to complain about that too much. Living with 25, I know I can live with one burn. Uh, I, I think I should just go for the knockoff here, because honestly, the Shaman switch in, or the Sandslash switch in, either one, 
either one's obvious. I'm glad it goes into Shaman, as I predicted that. Get the knockoff off, so I can knock its leftovers off. It doesn't do very much, but long term, it helps, I guess. Or did I not knock anything off? I really don't know. I didn't even see it. I, I just completely missed it. Whoops. Oh well, I, it's late at night, and I want to keep going with this. Seed Flare! There it is. Does pretty much zero damage to that Rotom Cut. I'm going to go for the light screen just so I can take any attack from it if in case it had some other attack like Air Slash or, I don't know, Hidden Power Poison. I, I have no clue. Here comes your Golgi. I can go for the Reflect just to have it up, just cushion the rest of my team, and I can have Volt Switch out of here. I know for a fact that your Golgi does not have any reliable recovery, so I know it's not going to get its health back up anywhere, anytime soon. I go into Volcanion, which has to be Japanese, uh, its name has to be in Japanese due to the event, but I got it completely custom made with my PK Hex and it was great. So here's my amazing set for the week that works so well. Alright, so my plan here was to not over predict this first turn, I had an inkling he was going to go into Rotom, but if I made my prediction for next turn, you'll see it in a sec. It would have just ruined it. I couldn't have done it again. So I had to not over predict and go for the earth power there. That I had to, not a question. It doesn't do anything, but at the end of the day, it's okay. It really is. It's not a huge deal for me because I can go for the solar beam. With power herb, of course. And it's going to do a massive amount of damage. Look at this. It's in red health. It can't even survive stealth rocks. And now it volt switches. So as long as he does not get the rapid spin off, that thing's gone. That thing's pretty much gone. I'm really, really happy with that with that solar beam set. It works really well. As you can see, if I over predicted and went for solar beam against that Dragalge, my plan was dead. So I had to be play it safe that time, for sure. Anyways, he goes into the what's it called? Man Shao. And I just eat that drain punch up for lunch. Crobat's flying high at the moment at about half health. I roost because I outspeed it, I EV'd it to outspeed it 100% of the time, except for Scarf, of course. He goes for the taunt. I'm actually totally okay with that because I still got Super Fang, I've got Brave Bird, I've got a lot that I can do here. He goes into the Rotom just to see what I do, I guess, or just fodder. That's fine. Totally fine. I guess he doesn't want to go into the Sand Slash to take half health from Super Fang. That's understandable. The light Screen wears off, I know the Reflect will wear off next turn. I have the cushion of the reflect this turn, which is never a bad thing. My super fang gets some half damage. Sandstorm, there it goes. I think I may still outspeed this thing. Let's see. Um, I do get buffeted by it, which kind of hurts a little bit, and my reflect is gone. But at a minimum, I outspeed it still, which is awesome. He goes for the stone edge and misses. Actually, that's not that big of a deal because I have this is very bulky, as you know, and. I have the Charty Berry, the Rock Resist Berry. I KO this thing. Three wide receivers out to the right. Flutie flushed. Throws it down. Cut by Boston College. I don't believe it. Oh. It's a touchdown. <laughs> the Eagles win it. Unbelievable! I don't believe it! I can't believe it either, Mr. Announcer Guy. This, getting rid of that Sand Slash, I think cleared my way to victory here. I mean, I, I, I can't obviously call it early, like the announcer did, in that miracle touchdown pass. But I mean, this is as close as it's going to get, because Crobat KOs that Dragald one hit. It's easily going to KO Mian Zhao in one hit, not a question. And it's all, he also has a Shaman as his last Pokemon, which is going to take massive damage from Brave Bird, and then just get KO'd by anything else on my team, if need be. If it had Psychic, then it might be able to get one, he might be able to get one more KO. But if that Mian Chao, I mean, if that Shaman does not have Psychic, I think Crobat wins this game easy, which is just so amazing. Crobat is going to go for Brave Bird against this Mian Chao. It went for knockoff, which did five damage, even with a Charty Berry. The, you know, even holding an item, I should say. This is just going so well. Here's Shaman right here. I want to go for the Brave Bird. I really was kind of hoping it would KO, but I have no offensive investment. But I, I gotta admit, even this damage that you're about to see gets into yellow. Still not bad for no investment whatsoever. 
And I also have 54 damage. I'm thinking this is the end of Crobat, but it's okay. I can go to anything else to outspeed it, like Cobalion. No, he just... I guess he is only a Seed Flare. That's fine. I, I can win this game with Brave Bird right here. This is awesome. Here we go. Here we go. Crobat getting 5 KOs in the day. A bulky, defensive natured crowbat. Actually, technically it was Jolly, but I mean, it, its main role was to be in a defensive one. So really, this is just so awesome this week. We get a strong win this week. We were carried on the wings of a very special bat. A perfect tribute to my charity of choice this week, the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation. I couldn't be more pleased. Now, this match means nothing going into next week. Consider myself 0-0 against one of the best players I know. Trev in Atlanta is a strong team. He typically does well against me, except in championships, of course. Let's make next week a championship. I'm going to do my best to make it another solid win. I feel confident, ready, and hyped. See you next week. Hi, I'm Doug Flutie. Throughout my collegiate and professional career, I've been named a hero for my play on the field. Today, I'd like to introduce you to some heroes in the game of life, children with autism and their families. At the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation, we strive to support these families and improve their quality of life by providing valuable therapeutic programs, financial aid, and funding for research related to autism spectrum disorder. With your continued help, we can all make a difference in the lives of children with autism. So please join us and support Dougie's team.